Good morning. Welcome to Equity Story. Uh, Thursday, the 3rd of August, um, and I'm on my own today. We're going to look through some announcements this morning. We're going to go through things that are deciding where our market is going um, and see if we can identify maybe a trade or two and see what we're going to do today. All right. Before we start, we've got Equity Story uh, disclaimer in front of you. Of course, it's all uh, general advice only. So any stock I'm going to talk about today is based on technicals and fundamentals only. So let's switch screens straight away and move on to what happened last night on the Dow. Uh, and it wasn't a great day. It was a big, big pullback. Um, as you can see, uh, S&P 500 was down 1.38. I think they're talking about it's the biggest fall on an S&P for about four months. Uh, NASDAQ down 2.2%, uh, 2.2% actually down John 1%. So it was a fairly heavy night of selling. Uh, and that was triggered by this thing right here, which is, uh, I'll give you a quick look down, Fitch downgraded US credit rating from AAA to AA. So I'm just trying to make myself a little hero. Uh, and unfortunately, it got a lot of clout. So anytime there is a um, credit rating downgrade uh, by Fitch or Moody's or whatever, you're going to see a bit of a reaction from the market. Now, is it, is it does it matter that the US has got downgraded by AAA to AA? No, it certainly isn't. I mean, they're still going to be very credit worthy. They're still going to be the best. They're still going to be demand. Um, is it a, you know, is it reasonable to assume that the US is worse than it was yesterday, credit rating wise? No, right. So this it makes zero sense. I suppose, but they're, they're doing the job. Uh, they're going to have to have a look at different factors. Fitch, and they said, look, they are going through the debt ceilings, uh, raising the debts ever, ever so high every time they, you know, pushing the can down the road. So we just have to make a movement, I suppose. They did that, but at the end of the day, is it going to make any difference whatsoever? No, it won't. But the market is always reactionary. Uh, and of course, we're going to have a bit of a, a night or maybe a week of selling. We just don't know. Uh, and it just gives you an opportunity maybe to have a look at some of the stocks that have come come back. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we are going to be looking at a bigger picture than just that Fitch credit rating that they've done that right now. And like I said, it's, it, it is arbitrary. I mean, that's the, probably the big word here. It's arbitrary more than anything else, but it does have clout. That's the problem. So one guy's opinion, one guy's push the button, says AAA to AA+. Plus. Down she goes. We've seen it with a lot of uh, research stocks by the big brokers, like yesterday with AGL, for example, um, that a broker said downgrade from buy to hold. Down she goes 4%. There you go. All right. We won't spend any more time on that. Uh, what else happened last night? So I think this is also pretty important. We've had also approximately about two thirds of S&P 500 now reported. Earnings beat rates are sitting around 82%, uh, so which is pretty, pretty good, right? So... Um, I think overall, at least the reporting season in the US is going quite well. We've only just begun ours, so we're going to have to wait to go through to see how we have performed. But at least from that point of view, um, that's that's good that we can tick that box, right? That the earnings season has been reasonably pretty good uh, in the US, so that at least there is no excuse for them for uh, for us to sell there. So presumably, if there is a Fitch rating downgrades, we got a bit of a sell off like we're having right now you'll see that buying coming in at a certain level. Uh, and we'll look at some of the charts in a moment to, to see where exactly where we could go. Let's switch on to trade economics. I want to have a quick look through the actual um, commodities because the Rio Tintos, the BHPs, they've all been coming down the last couple of days. I mean, yesterday we had a pretty poor day of 90 points down. Um, so that was to do with uh, a lot of the mining stocks as well. So you can see for the week, we've got iron ore down 6%, lithium down 6%. That's just going to weigh uh, on our markets because we remember we're top heavy on the mining space, right? Uh, and if you go down to the main uh, base metals, it has been pretty mixed week. So fairly flat for cobalt, leads, aluminium. Tin is the one that's been down 4%, but then you've got nickel up 3%. So really flat, not much happening there. Doesn't reflect, obviously. Well, it's reflecting on a market that we're not going anywhere. We're going down at the moment with the, with the US markets. All right, so let's switch on to uh, some announcements this morning. Let's see where we are, uh, and we'll we'll go through that right now. So the first one I had was yesterday, and I've got the chart up already for you. AIS, 
if this is not a sell, I don't know what is, uh, because they've had pretty much a disappointing announcement yesterday talking about the Jaguar project, which they're going to put on care and maintenance due to the fact that it's going to be unprofitable. There's some instability. There's some seismic events. So they're going to say, no, nah, let's put it on care maintenance. Look at it some other time. I think they probably need much higher prices than they've got at the moment, which means they're going to take a lot of production out of the whole operations that they've got, uh, AIS. Unfortunately, SOL has got a big chunk of uh, AIS. Um, so that's probably going to reflect slightly on their price. Let's have a look what's going on in SOL. Yeah, that's why this were a bit of a negative movement right there but still pretty positive overall because it's not just AIS that they've got but we've got to remember that you know some of these stories are you know attached maybe uh they've got some sort of a uh, um unfortunately stakes in other companies uh, and it will affect them as well all right so AIS definitely a sell as you can see you just don't want to be there if you're in it for some sort of reason um even though we like copper and you know we're thinking that we should be looking at some copper stocks this is not one of them all right let's move on to scxl and i know yesterday we talked briefly about it and i did mention that you know i want to show me the money i want to see really revenues right out of these pilot plants out of all this technology that is look i, I read today the article in afi and probably hopefully some of you read it as well it is pretty interesting it is pretty positive right talking about this um pls and cxl um, pilot plant that they're building uh, and looking to change the picture, of course, in lithium processing, where you know we're, we're looking at a, a, a different way or maybe a cheaper way of delivering the lithium to end buyers over in China, um, which is quite interesting, of course, because it's going to definitely aid the likes of PLS if this works uh, on a larger scale um, and possibly, I mean, the, the actual. I'd say when you look at the picture of lithium batteries, right, the NCMs versus the LFS, it's certainly looking like um, the L L LFP, sorry, not LFS, LFP batteries are going, uh, it's the way to go. They are starting to become more prevalent in as, as car batteries for the electric cars. So potentially that's what it is. And uh, LFP is basically lithium phosphorus batteries versus the nickel lithium batteries. Um, and if you want to read about it, go for it. Uh, you can just go LFP versus NCM and see what comes up for NMC. Sorry, got prob problems with my thing. NMC with this LFP, right? And see what comes up. You can have a read about it. But it's the Chinese are driving the LFP adoption, um, which is quite interesting. So it potentially there is something there for CXL but it just might not be there at the moment. You can see that the share price at the moment, it is still languishing, not much happening there. Once it gets over 40, we might try it again. But yeah, look, I'm interested in the technology. I'm interested in the story for sure, but I just want a better share price performance and it hasn't been performing for some time, right? So uh, more amounts like this, uh, maybe some more revenues, and then maybe we'll see a better share price and then we can start looking at it a bit more seriously as a trade. All right, let's move on to OFX. So this morning, now this morning's announcements, let's have a look at some of those. We've got OFX come out, and I know that um, we've got a uh, hot stock trade on this, right? Uh, and today they've just come, uh, just had a uh, AGM talking about uh, how things are going, and they reiterated uh, the full year guidance. So nothing really status quo, which is nice. Um, nothing surprising on the upside, nothing surprising on the downside. Um, the market's a little bit down, of course. I mean, that's just for the week, of course naturally with everything else that's going on around uh down to two and a half percent there that's okay so still a hold technically as you can see nothing's changed there hopefully we'll bounce off that two bucks and head higher towards the 250 so no concern there let's have a look at the next one l and k now i know this has been a dog and a half maybe probably even worse than a dog it's been a probably on support system down the five percent for the week uh today they had an update um down four percent look the update was okay wasn't anything fantastic. Um, I think they've one of the lines, I think EBIT line was a positive above what they're talking about. But at the end of the day, it's still a dog, needs to do way, way, way more. Um, so really, you're probably still selling this. Look at that. It's actually gone below the previous 
uh, the previous sort of lows right there, uh, and it's now below. So it finishes like this the week, you've got to get out. It's just still not untouchable, unfortunately. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's look at some lithium stories. I know lithium, we just saw the lithium price wasn't fantastic, but you know, I, I'm always interested in seeing anything lithium that's uh, maybe trading, looking all right. So they come up with some, I look, and I love good jurisdictions like Scandinavia. I don't mind Scandinavia as a jurisdiction because it's, um, you know, it's easy to understand um, as long as you can get permits, right? Because Scandinavia is very green. So it's looking to get permits, but they also have a mining codes as well. So you can do it if you follow the rules. Uh, all right, so 18% today, 18% today, uh, should I say. And that, it's interesting because the actual results that come out today, just, you know, pretty permanently. And again, I don't really put much emphasis on rock chips, but it's just good to see there's some pretty strong type, you know, I suppose rock chip results from a fairly large area. So, you know, Finland, Finland is good. Um, so one to watch. Would I be trading it yet? Not yet. As you can see, it needs to do way more. One to put it on your watch list to see maybe further down the track whether we can start looking at it. All right, let's look at the next one. I know it's been pretty tight the last couple of days. So it's very difficult to actually find a trade right now, but let's have a look at EGL. Um, down to 20 and a half cents. And again, a positive announcement, but the market is just at right now in a profit mode, mode taking, right? So it's just difficult to just grab onto something and go, oh, I want to buy this. Um, but it's again, one to potentially look at, you know, accumulating around the 20 cent mark with a view of bouncing up the 20 going to the 24, because the last couple of announcements have been pretty, pretty good. You've got, you know, you've got a positive uh, financial announcement. You've got another announcement today saying expense service offering into solar farms uh, with its air filtration systems. It's all adding to that positively vibe of the company and of course the financials. So I'd expect that you know over time, once the markets maybe settles down again, that will probably bounce off that 20 cents around there and head back to the 22, 23, 24 cent mark. I still like the story overall fundamentally. So you know if you're in this because maybe you bought it on this, Candle or on this candle is still a hold. Wait till the end of the week anyway. We've got another day to go. It could be about tomorrow. Uh, all right, let's look at Dow because uh, I know this one's been a dog too. Uh, let's have a look if they have recovered or are recovering. Um, and they have recovered, but they're coming back to the trend lines again. So again, if you bought it on this as a trade, right? No need to panic yet. I think you've got this nice $4, maybe $3.95 as your stop. Uh, and hopefully it will swing off. So you've got that movement upwards, bit of profit taking, which normally happens. It's just normal uh, part of the, the trading cycle. Uh, comes back to the trend lines, bounces off and goes higher, right? Now, is the announcement today decent? It is because although they had the non-cash uh, uh, impairment charges, right? They're still coming out with a guidance achieving. Uh, so achievement. So for me, overall, looks decent. Um, and I would not be panicking on this one at all. All right, let's move on to the next one. So a couple more announcements. And uh, this one we won't know until we actually see the announcement come through. COSO, which I know we're trading at the moment, COS. Uh, it is in a trading hold because they are going to raise some cash and they're going to announce a acquisition. So that's going to be interesting to see what it, what it is. Uh, and the next one is LIN. Uh, so let's have a look at LIN because they come up with a big, big resource. Uh, so let's have a look what they're looking like. Um, and yeah, looking looking okay. Let's look at today's movement. And it's down 7%, but that's not too bad. Look, overall, I think um, it is decent company with a big resource at about two, two and a half, I think. Uh, two and a half percent uh, total rare earth oxides at about 200 million tons. That's big, 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 big resource, right? So for me, Tradable, yes. Investable, probably not, because it's in Africa and it's very difficult to really become comfortable, comfortable, confident, and all the other names you can probably add to it as a long-term investment, right? So that's that's what that's that's with that one. So just tradable, but right now, um, probably, if you're in this, you might be okay, but you got to use that red line as your stop. Now let's look at a couple of other things, like I mentioned before, AGL. Uh, on yesterday's downgrade. It's crazy, isn't it? How these things move. Um, so you got another, whoops, let's go today. The daily, it's it's actually up 
nine cents today. But you know, you can see one guy's opinion. What a difference it makes, right? On it, it's just crazy. They've got way too much power, too much egos, too much manipulation. Uh, I, I, but there is there's the market for you. What can you do? Just move on with it. Um, and so uh, yeah, be happy with it. I suppose we're still making a profit, and we're still holding actually because it's still holding that red line. However, I think I think we if we are going to be looking at a fairly strict strict maybe under the 11 12 bucks maybe but i think i'd just go to the daily and go okay if it finishes below that red line i'm out because it's been holding that for a long 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 time right so it's still still in there just 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 all right um let's go quickly through some of these uh um announce well not not an announcement but like just my uh my watch list just to see if there's anything in there that looking okay so you know we're talking about catapult uh as a good trade that's still looking okay after really two days of heavy selling um we've got play side still okay still holding the 50 cents um let's have a look uh wa bouncing a little bit that's not too bad you look we talked about agl is bouncing as well that's nice Ooh, doo -doo. apart from that it's probably going to be red so let's have a look what the market's actually doing today now is it because yesterday we had 96 points down today we've got another 51 points down so that's a fairly heavy two days down i suppose you can call it uh, and that's AXJO. What about AXSI, which is the small small caps down 20, 30, 30 points, which is about 1%. So not a great day. Like I said, hopefully tomorrow we'll have a better, better day, bit of a bounce. Uh, this is what happens. At least we've got a decent, decent reporting season ahead of us. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's uh, trade watch and I'll see you again tomorrow. Cheers.